Hello everybody, my name is Alan, I'm from Cyberlab and today will be another video about Trunasi scale. In this video, I'm gonna explain a little bit more about the applications that the Trunas have as a standard. In this case, will be the SyncFink. SyncFink is another option for generate backups for your system, or at least to synchronize your data between one computer to another. Different for our sync, SyncFink you can generate different revisions of your data in this way that you can track kind of a snapshot, but in a sync or in another computer. So in this way, you can have uh, one other option to make your data secure and make your data available in the case that your computer failure or any hack attack. So if you like this idea and want to learn a little bit more about it, we're going to show in this video. But first of all, don't forget to leave a like, consider to subscribe for the channel and let's understand a little bit more about it. Before we start to configure SyncFink in your TrueNAS, let's understand why it's usable for you and why you want to use it. So SyncFink is a continuous file synchronization program. It uh, synchronizes two or more computers. In this way, you can have a protection of your data. In this application, you can not only synchronize data, but you can create different revisions. You can have uh, some specific configurations. In this way, if you, you delete one file, you still have different revisions of your file. Of course, this will use more space, but will make more save your system. Other thing that's interesting that you can encrypt your data, you can uh, create authentication to be able to access. Different for rsync that you create a module and everyone that sits connected to your network have access for this mode. You need to have authentication, you need to have permissions, you need to configure those permissions in order to access it. So this is a main difference. And if you already have a cloud sync, why don't you use a sync thing to connect between two computers and have different revisions for it? In this way, we're going to start to configure it in TrueNAS. In this video, I have one TrueNAS and other uh, OpenMediaVal where I already have my sync thing installed. So in this OpenMediaVal, we're going to have all the information, but the main place that will send information is my TrueNAS. My TrueNAS that I'm using is TrueNAS SK revision 22.02.4. I have uh, the 16 gigabytes of uh, run memory and I have um, four cores. But this one will not affect so much because only thing that I want to do is to understand what kind of configuration or permissions that I need to do. Before I come here in my storage and start to define any permissions, I will do the configuration for a sync thing and that I will modify over the time. At least you guys will understand what problem that you're gonna have and in this way, uh, will make more easy to understand how or what you need to configure it. So first thing, we come here in our permissions and this data has been stripped all the ACL or all the configuration. So only one that have access for this folder is the root. We come here in my apps and I have my available applications. In this available application, I did add any catalog. So only application that's come is the standard sync thing applications in this way they are officials and i have a few applications that you can install in our case we're going to configure our sync thing so we will come here in sync thing and put install it you appear this page for me it's totally fine to use this folder name so i come here next configuration this is the users that i'm using this user it's re restrict for the apps user if I want to use any other user, I need to modify it here. But in this case, we're going to configure it for the app user have uh, access for that specific folder. If you want that the root have access for it, I will put 00. If I want to have a, a user only create for those, I will need to use the user. But let's keep as app and that I will configure my folder data to have access for the folder. And, and then I will configure it the data set data have uh, permissions for the apps. You can do everything that you want, only need to understand, I will do for apps, but if you want to do anything else, you can do the same way. So now we're gonna put next. Storage, in this case, I'm not creating any storage, but we're gonna need to reassess it later. Network, I don't want to move anything because it's quite good to have exactly the same configuration for sync both computers. If you don't have any reason to change it, leave the standard port. So let's leave this way and put next. 
Linux, we're gonna leave this way, next. Resource, we're gonna leave exactly the same. And here they will give you an option for review the information. Because we didn't want to find basically nothing, we don't need to worry about it, we only put save. Once that I save, I come here in style application and they already appear active. So I can come here web portal and they appear this page. First time they say if you wanted to track the information, yes, for me it's totally fine. And here they already give some advice. So the first advice they say that you need to create a, a password, otherwise you can have a option to be hacked. So let's create a password first thing. We put settings, GID, and then let's create our password. So it will be Sauber Lab, and my password, and I put save. So in this way, for access my folder, I need to have my login. Here I have login for my user, I can come at settings and can look for other configurations. So here they will allow me to index maximum minimum of 1% of my disk. Here my IPE that I'm using. If I come here for GID, my user and password. If I want to change the type of the page, I can change. Or if I want to use HTTPS, I can use HTTPS in this case. Connections, I can configure some standard connections. In my case, I will leave everything as is, is default. Ignore device, no. Ignore folders, no. So in this way, I have my sync thing basically with my password, but let's try to add a folder. Standard information, add a folder. What folder that I want to add? Suppose that I want to add this storage folder. So I come here, view permissions, and here is the path for the storage folder. I will copy this path come here and try to paste this path and put data. Sharing, I don't need to do anything. File system, in this case, I don't need to create any file system or ignore any data. Another thing, we can configure our advanced. So this advanced, it's how often I want to sync. So in this way, it's around one hour that they will resync. If I want to sync less time, I can add it. Otherwise, I can leave for standard. Type of folder, I can put to send only, receive only, or receive encrypted. In my case, I will leave as send and receive. If I have any problem, I want to be able to recover my data and receive it back. Other thing, sync ownership, send, I will leave exactly the same, I will put save. Once that I put save, the iPad appear stopped, and if I try to sync, they will not be able to sync anything. Why? Because they say that uh, they tried to create this folder, but they didn't find. Why this one happened? Because I didn't link my Docker container to this folder. What it means? Let's open our container, open my stack, sync thing, and if you guys remember the last configuration that we did, we put some volumes. So in this case, I put the absolute path for my volume slash configuration. So once that I look for that absolute path, they will say, ah, have a configuration here, so I'll be able to access it. And in my case, I didn't configure it, so let's do it. Let's come here, edit, I come here in my path, add path, I want it to be this specific path for data, and put slash data. In this way, now we'll have access for this data. If I want to configure more paths, I can come here, add, and we'll configure any path that I want. In my case, I only want data and put save. Now what I need to change, I need to come here, I will delete this specific path, and I will add a new path. So I'll come here and put slash data, the same way that I did before, and I'll put as a data. The rest I will leave exactly the same and put save. Now I have my data, but I still don't have permission to access it. Why I don't have permissions? Because this folder is specific for root. So now I come here in my storage, and I will start to configure my permissions. So I come here, view permissions, edit permissions. I have an option to change this permission specific, but I will do a cell configuration. So I'll come here, I put restrict and put configure. I have two options now. I can create a new user and put this user to have access for it, or I can create the owner of the folder as apps. In my case, to be easy, I will create as a owner of the folder should be app. So I'll come here, apps, and come here the same way and put apps. I put apply for group, apply for users, and now 
I come all this default and put read, write, and execute, and put permission for the other folders here and put save. In this way, now my user will have access for this specific folder. Let's try it. Let's come here and put sync. It will be unshared and it will look for my data because I don't have so many things there. It will put nothing. So let's copy some data for my TrueNAS. I come here, TrueNAS, and I still don't have access for it because I didn't configure it for my specific user have access to it. So let's fix it. Let's come here, permissions, add permissions, and I'll add my mask and add my group. So I'll put group and I put home users. Home user the same way that I configure it, read, write and read. My mask as well, read, write and I put save. In this way, now I'll have access for my folder. If I come here and try to access it, I already have access for my specific folder. I'll create a new folder called photos. So we'll put photos and I will copy some photos to this folder. In this way, I come here and copy some pictures and those pictures are already saved in this folder. So now what I can do, I can come here and I put resync. Now they already appear that's increased the size of my folder for 11.3 megabytes. If I look around 11.3 megabytes. So it's already sync my data. But uh, we finished our configuration. No, we didn't finish our configuration because we only have all this data in this specific computer. What's not good for you, me? Because I need to have the information for the other computer. In this way come my open media ball, where I already have configured my sync thing. If I come here my container, they already have my sync thing. So let's open this specific sync thing for do the configuration. Here my sync thing, it's the first time that I open here. I put yes, no problem. I will not set any password in this case, I will put OK. And now I have my standard configuration. What I need to do, I need to sync this computer to this computer. So let's add a new device. I have two options. If I add for here, I will need to get permissions for all the information here. Or I can add here and put to allow everything. So if I come here, I put add a device. Here is my name, so I will put uh, name TrueNAS. My name of the device name, TrueNAS, I will come here, show my ID and copy this information and pass here. So now sharing, I can accept, auto accept. I can introduce the new list and now I don't have any information here. I come here and leave as a standard and put save. In this way, they will try to connect to my TrueNAS and they will give some information. Now they will try to connect, it will take some minutes until they are able to synchronize the data. And if I come here, they will already appear. You are sure that you want to synchronize this data? I will put add device. So you want to try the device? Yes. Sharing, you can select auto accept or not. In my case, I want to leave auto accept that all the data that is here, they will be auto accepted there. Other thing, I want to share this specific folder. If I want to protect a little bit more data, or I want to protect that the other server don't have access for my specific data to do my encryption key, I can create my encryption key or I can leave inked. In my case, I will leave inked because I want to see what information that I have in the other server. So it's fine for me, advanced, I can have any extra configuration and put save. Once that this one happened, they will start to configure or connect this data. Here, will be exactly the same, they will start to connect the data, so let's wait and see what's going to happen. Now they appear that they are synchronized and all the information is done, so I'll put OK. And if I come here, they already appear my synchronize automatically because I make it to be automatic. What can I do? I can come here, edit my information, and I can configure my share in the second folder. So if I come here, file versions, and I put sample versions, I can define how much samples or how many revisions that I want to keep. So I can put to keep at least seven days. I can leave at least um, five revisions and I put save. So in this way, they will start to create different revisions for all the time that they will sync. And they will take some times until they start to sync. So they appear sync items and here they start to sync my items. So let's wait for all this data that's here to be synchronized for here. After we add the folder data, here I have the folder data, 
because we configurate revisions, so only this place that we're gonna be able to see the revisions. What that means, if I come here back in my TrueNAS data, thoughts and delete those thoughts, if I come here in my TrueNAS system and I put rescan, those 11 megabytes disappear and automatically those 11 megabytes will disappear here because they have been synced. But the good thing that uh, same thing can do for you is if you come here revision, they show all the things that disappear. If I come here my photos, I still have my photos. So if I copy any, another thing here and, and delete, they will be showing all the data, at least uh, five revision for everything. So I come here and I put, hey, start, let's hey, start everything. Uh, select all the latest revision and I put hey, store. So in this way, they will hey, store all my four files. They will appear here, my four files, it's a couple of seconds here and automatically they will send this data from here so in this way they will reappear all my data here so it's one good thing for SimThink you can always keep different revisions for your end server and in this way if you have anything in your system you will still be able to recover your data I hope that you like this video in this way you understand a little bit more how you can configure permissions and how you can use SyncThink for extra layer of protection for your data. In this way, you don't rely only on our sync. You have a SyncThink that will generate different revisions, need authentication and a different option for you protect your system. So if you like this video and think that was interesting, don't forget to leave your like, consider subscribe for the channel and see you next time. Bye.